EC475 computer networks and I'm going to talk about network topologies and network models. Let's discuss why network topologies are very important because for example there are two types of devices whether wireless or wired. One is end user devices and one is your connecting devices. So we call it as end user devices and we call it as connecting devices. Now, as for IEEE standards, there are different different standards of communication protocols like token bus, token ring, and all. Now, when these devices are connected, they make a topology. We, uh, when, uh, for example, these three devices are connected uh, with a switch, this form a physical topology, and uh, when we look into such architecture, this is node and this is connecting device. So this creating a logical topology. So there is a difference between physical topology and logical topology. We will consider logical topology. Now when we talk, think about, uh, now when we look into logical topologies, we find out LAN and WAN depending on connect connections. We will also discuss what is internet and intranet. Now, as per physical topologies, we can see that if it is within a network, within a home network, we call it as LAN. Now, when it is connected in a city, we call it as metropolitan, metropolitan area network MAN. And when it is wide, it is called WAN. Now, uh, if WAN is distributed among different cities, we call it as intranet. Now, when any network is connected to outer world, we call it as internet. Now, let's talk about the architecture. Network topology is now in speech, uh, now, as for logical topologies, we give a name of bus, star, ring, mesh, tree. We also give a name and Name graph, we also give a name hybrid depending on the architecture. Now, bus, bus topology is, for example, these are nodes which are connected in a series. In a, this is called bus topology. Now, star when it forms, for example, there is a connected connection device, and these are the nodes when they are connected and form a star topology. With from this architecture, this diagram we call it a star topology. Now, what is the ring topology? Now, if we join this two end of a bus topology, this forms a ring. We have token bus token ring, which we will discuss later. So, this is ring topology. Now, what is mesh topology? For example, nodes are connected with each other. So, for example, N1, N2, and N3. They are all connected with each other. Directly we call it as mesh network. Now mesh are of two types. One is called full mesh and one is called partial mesh. Now full mesh means when they are all connected with each other, then it's full mesh. And when it is not fully connected, we call it as partial mesh. For example, this is a partial mesh. This can also form a partial mesh because this is not connected. And in full mesh, if we have n number of nodes, in full mesh, if we have n number of nodes, now number of connections basically calculated as n into n minus 1 by 2. So for example, 4 nodes, then it will be 4 into 3 by 2, this is 6. Now for four nodes, there will be six connections. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So this is the formula to calculate for the connectivity in full mesh. Now what is this tree structure? When different different stack topology create a hierarchical architecture, we call it as tree structure. Now this can be a tree structure. This can be a tree structure. 
this, 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 we call it a strict structure. When we categorize under graph topology, when, when there is a graph data structure is there, we call it as graph. And when it is combination of all those things, we call it as hybrid. Now network models. It is very it is very much required to know what is network model or what is communication network communication model. Now, when we talk about network communication model, we first talk about layered architecture, layered structure versus, versus non-layered means the old conventional model where we don't have it, any kind of standards. Now, why layered model is required? For any task, to execute that particular task, we need to divide that task into different layer. Then the task is, for example, network communication will be very much better to execute and very much organized way it can be managed or it can be executed. Now, when we talk about layer architecture, the entire communication system initially when the layer architecture, layer structure came, the first model which came into the market was TCP IP protocol suit model. Now what is TCP IP protocol suit model? Now what is protocol suit? Now when we talk about communication, it requires a standard rules, a standard mechanism which need to be carried out in at each and every layer and we call it as protocol suit. So for any communication, this basic protocol suit is required. For example, downloading a file, browsing a website, transferring some data, sending a mail, and any 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 network applications follows this TCP IP protocol suit model. So TCP, the full form of TCP is transmission network protocol which is a transport layer or host-to-host -host communication layer task and internet protocol which is IP so which came or which was introduced to standardize this system now there are four layers in TCP IP protocol so model first is application layer that is what uh, we call it as layer 4 or the top layer this is called top layer then we have something called transport layer or we call it as host to host communication layer communication layer then next we have something called a network layer or internet layer which which gives you the protocol which is called internet protocol now this defines TCP this defines IP and that is the reason TCP IP protocol model was there. Now network access or network interface model. Now some book you can find out network access. Some book you can find out find out is network interface. Mostly it will say network access. And some white paper you can find out that network interface because this is giving network interfacing. So these are TCP IP protocol model. We will compare this uh, model with other model now. After this model. There was a requirement of standardized model which introduced in early 80s and this was called ISO SI reference model. Now the name of this model is OSI that is Open System Interconnection. Now this TCP protocol protocol suit model defines your protocols, standards of communication, but this OSI, which is called Open System Interconnection Model, this Open System Interconnection Model basically defines how two devices are communicating with each other, whether it is end user device, whether it is normally uh, end user devices has the support of all seven layers. Now, let's first give you a list of the seven layers. On top, that is user start interacting with 
layer 7, we call it as a 7 application layer. Next, we have something called presentation layer. This is layer 6. Then we have something called session layer, which is layer 5. Then we have transport layer. We have layer 4. Then we have network layer, which is layer 3. Then data link layer, which is layer 2. And we have physical layer, which is layer 1. Now, when there is a communication, each and every layer plays a role and plays some functionality in the communication process. Now, when you look at the application layer, this handles different different applications of different users. This is the one which is interacting with different users. Now, this is PC and this is a user. So, you or me who are using any particular network based applications basically interacting with the application layer and physical layer is the physical connectivity you know PC for example two PCs are connected with each other this is nothing but my physical layer now physical layer is responsible for carrying communications in terms of signals now when we look into the data link layer data link layer defines the connections then the medium, whether it is wired medium, whether it is wireless medium, it actually de defines that one. Now each and every layer, if you look into, uh, if you compare OSI model and TCP IP protocol suit model, this three layer combined together matches with the application layer. This is transport layer, this is your data layer, this is your transport layer, and this is your network layer. Because these two matches with the network access or network interface layer. Now, these two models, if you compare, the application layer protocols handle the handles basically the task of application layer, presentation layer, and session layer. End-to-end -end communication is handled by your by your transport layer, network layer handles the same task or is handled in that internet layer and data link and physical layer combined together called network access layer. Now we will be elaborately telling you. Now let's first introduce one more thing that is called protocol data unit. Now each and every layer generate data unit which is called protocol data unit. Now this three layers application layer protocol data unit is nothing but my message. Now every applications generate a message. Now this particular message which will be sent across from one user to another user. Now OSI model is, is basically taking care of how each and every layer handle this communication and this TCP IP protocol suit model defines the protocol or the standards how this communication takes place. Now let's um, the next layer, transport layer. Now, transport layer is responsible for first either connection oriented communication, connection oriented communication, or connection less communication. Now, what is connection oriented protocol? Or what is connection oriented mechanism or connection oriented protocol on the board? For example, these two hosts, one is called sender, one is called receiver, communicating with each other. Now, when we have a guaranteed communication, then the transport layer is basically taking care of this host to host connectivity. Now, when we talk about this host to host uh, connectivity, so first there is a requirement of binding between these two hosts. Now, if it is a client server architecture or both are uh, server or both are client, doesn't peer-to-peer mm. -peer connection doesn't make any difference if transport layer is taking help of TCP or incorporating transmission control protocol then there is a connection establishment process so it's basically three way it happens first there is a connection establishment
then data transfer and then the connection will be terminated connection termination process now this all processes are basically comes under handshaking now what is handshaking now handshaking is a process by which they bind with each other now for example sender and receiver are doing the handshaking in between them to do the connection establishment now in connection establishment there is either two way handshaking or three way handshaking we call it as there's a board and we call it as handshaking the handshaking is a method for the connection with connection oriented protocol now handshaking one is two way second is three way two way is very easy this is user one this is user two it is sending a request for establishing connection it is giving acknowledgement then there is a bind process completed this is called two way handshaking so it is sending a request for establishing a connection it is giving acknowledgement reply that i am establishing a connection but this when in between these two user there is a, another confirmation comes from source to destination okay when i am confirming before sending a data this is called three way communication this is called synchronization syn syn plus ac can there is a final acknowledgement happens within this two user which is basically nothing this is three way handshaking so there is always an acknowledgement for any packet delivery in case of transport layer when we use the tcp as a transmission control protocol now here in this case i will introduce one more thing that is called the communication one is unicasting multicasting unicast multicast and broadcast now what is unicast for example two hosts are communicating with each other now what i have shown you is basically comes under unicast now what is multicast when more number of users or a group of users talking with each other then this process is for or multicast but broadcast means one user is sending some information and it is not guaranteeing that whoever is there in the network will listen for example in the broadcast domain whenever any user sends some information it broadcast to that particular network and it is sent to everyone but there is no guarantee whether this particular user or particular user will not get any acknowledgement from any of the receiver that they have received the packet so connectionless protocol is basically user datagram protocol who handles such things and in user datagram protocol no user there is no guarantee in the communication there is no acknowledgement so often unicast and multicast has such kind of communication where there is a guarantee in the communication but in case of broadcast there is no guarantee of communication now uh, let's again write this several layer very clearly then we can discuss the further model now it is the systematic process now for example let me give, give uh, explain this model with an example now at this juncture let's give you more detailed idea about the Seven layer OSI model. Now OSI model. This is ISO standard. Now ISO OSI the full form OS, OSI is Open System Interconnection model. The full form this is Open System Interconnection and this is used for reference as a communication. So we call it as ISO OSI reference model. When we talk about when we are talking about ISO OSI reference model. We are talking about host to host communication. For example, host 1 and host 2 communicating with each other. And there is a physical connection which is called 
WAN connection and it wants to send a message hi from this particular okay, user to this particular user. Now how, how it will be handled? Now it will open some application to send this particular message. So application layer handle that application part of it. That how this which application will open, how the application uh, handle this particular message, whether it is a chat message, whether it is a mail message, whatever it is, the application layer protocol will handle this and application, a corresponding application will open this particular file and it will make it ready to trust, okay, transfer uh, or to send this particular file from host to host. Now what presentation layer do? Presentation layer takes care of the presentation part of it. That how this high message will be presented and also presentation layer takes care of it, the user part. For example, the host A is user A and the host 2 is user B. So user A is having some authentication and authorization, the authentication and authorization, the username, password and all connectivity part will be taken care of by presentation layer. Now, this requires single session or so many number of sessions depending on the process. Now, this is handled by the session layer, how the sessions, cookies and all those things will be handled. So this, all those three will be handling this information in the form of message which is called application layer protocol data unit and this is nothing but in TCP IP protocol so model, this is defining some protocol and in TCP IP protocol so model, this is coming under a single, okay. Single layer that is called application layer. Now, next, what it will decide, it will say, it will tell the next layer that is transport layer to decide upon that how this packet will be delivered. So, transport layer is responsible for creating the or converting the packet into segment or datagram. Now, if it is datagram, then it is broadcast. Okay. This is a clear unicast message and this transport layer decide upon that delivery part of it, host to host delivery part of it. Now DCP will manage such things, it will open a port, DCP has some well known port and some ports, so DCP will create a port. Now those who have actually used any network kind of programming know how to create an RMI project. Now you know that when you do some remote method uh, invoking some code from remotely on accessing some code remotely or using any network connection in Java, you need to open some port or if or if you look into socket programming, um, socket programming also have some port. Now this is called network port. Now this is a 16 bit number. So varying from 0 to 2 to the power 16 minus 1. This is the port number. In transport layer, you define the specific port which the communication takes place. Now it may require, it may take single port, it can take multiple port, but this actually transport the data to a specific port. The transport layer handles not only this, it also handles congestion. Whether there is a congestion issue, connectivity issue in network, so transport layer basically handles segmentation, reassemble creation of segments, creation of packets for lower layers and other things. So this comes under the process of transport layer. Now, the next layer which is responsible for end-to-end -end uh, sorry, res uh, responsible for or helping transport layer in end-to-end -end delivery by creating addresses, nothing but a network layer. Now network layer is having something called internet protocol. Now, these two hosts require an IP address. Now, so, host 1 will be having an IP address 1 and host 2 having an IP address 2. Now, these two addresses can be in single network, can be in different network. So, if it is there in different network, you require routing to send the packet which we will discuss later, what is routing. So depending on addresses, depending on the network, it will decide that how it will, it will determine the logical path. So the route is also determined by network layer. So in network layer, task is basically creation of packets, packet delivery from source address to destination address 
by creating the root. So it is doing basically doing the roughing. The next layer has something called next layer is called data link layer, which has some two sub layers, which is called LLC and max sub layer. Now, unlike network layer, max sub layer plays one more address, which is called physical address or MAC address. So both MAC address and IP address is required because when you find out the logical address, you need to find out the physical location of these two hosts. Then only this two hosts can communicate with each other and physically can send the data. So data link layer is responsible for finding out the physical delivery. It also do framing. It also do error control. It also manages different different flow controls. So data link layer has some sliding window protocol which manages it and finally physical layer. Physical layer will be responsible for delivering the packet physically from source to destination and it also manages signals. Now it can be electrical signal, electromagnetic signal or optical signal now depending on the connections and finally physical layer takes care of about the delivery from source to destination. Now this is about all the seven layers. Now, now let's discuss each and every layer one by one in details. Today, first I will discuss about physical layer, some connections, issues and some problems in physical layer. Then we will move to other layers. So first discuss about the physical layer. So what physical layer basically do? Physical layer, when physical layer carries the data, it has bits and bytes. We call it as bit. So, what is one byte? One byte is nothing but eight bit. So, for example, if some data transmission is taking uh, place, which is carrying hundred page information, each page uh, containing eight lines, and one line is some containing eighty bytes of data. So, finally, hundred pages, eight lines. 80 bytes in each line and this is bit so this will be actually your total number of bits if you are having some file which you are downloading now if this actually this is the mechanism by which you can calculate the data in bits so bit is basically the unit of the data and the bit rate is basically calculating helping you to calculate the rate of the data rate, the rate by which the data is transferred from source to destination. Let's do some calculations. Okay. When we now next is next we talk about bandwidth. Now what bandwidth is? Bandwidth has now when the data is transferred. Now there is two bands. This is level one. For example, this is level two, and this is called lower band. This is called higher band. So basically, bandwidth is nothing but the difference between lower band and higher band. So if we have this is higher band is H1, lower band is L1. So H1 minus L1 is nothing but my bandwidth. So let's take an example to discuss this problem. Now next is, so we have calculated bandwidth equal to H, B minus LB, higher band minus lower band. Next formula we have something called bit length. Bit length is nothing but propagation speed, speed into bit duration. Now, for example, propagation speed is given T and bit duration is given S. So then we can calculate. So this will be in a single unit. So if it is in second, the propagation speed should to be M per second. Then we can calculate the bit length, total number of bit transport. Okay. So for example, if you have a propagation speed given 
100 meter per second and we have a given a bit duration which is 3 second so bit length will be calculated as 100 meter per second into 3 second which is nothing but 300 meter so such problems can be given that you calculate a bit length so how you calculate the propagation speed? Propagation speed is nothing but distance by time d by t. Now if you have given some distance and if you have given some time then you can calculate propagation speed that is meter per second or any other unit and you have to use the standard unit for the calculation. Next topic what we are going to discuss here is transmission impairment. Now what is transmission impairment? Now, let's understand a basic signal. We have two types of signal. What is signal? Signal is basically the physical layer of what carries the data. Now, in signal, we have two types of signal. Analog signal and digital signal. Now, when we talk about analog signal, this is the analog signal like sine wave and all. So it's a you can represent this signal as for example a omega sine n pi t m pi t plus b omega sine n pi t. This can be represented as analog signal and then digital signal is basically represented as in the form of if you take two state or three state for example two state means zero one a tri-state signal also can be represented this is plus one zero and minus one but normally this is in the form of zero and one so for example this is zero representation this is one representation this is zero representation this is one representation when we will discuss line coding we will discuss more into how to represent such signals now when we have the transmission going on, there is something called transmission impairment. So, let's now discuss about transmission impairment. So, basically, transmission impairment is there are some signal losses or the changes of signal due to some issues in the network, some issues in the trans transmission. Now, what is transmission impairment? Basically, the change of signal. Now, if you look into the transmission impairment, that means the signal is changed or signal is the property of the signal has been changed. The first transmission impairment is called attenuation. Attenuation means Maybe the in common word we call the signal becomes weaker. For example, this is a signal. Now this is the original signal. This becomes a attenuated signal. So what is required is basically when you have this original signal and this attenuated signal. This attenuated signal is basically is the time period and all those things has been reduced. So you can do the amplification. So if you use the amplifier so for example here you are using the amplifier. So this attenuated signal can be converted to original signal. So so when uh, normally it travels through different different mediums, signals become weak and we use such amplifier or we use such physical devices to maintain the signal strength so uh, if we do not do the attenuation happens now signal of two types now signal of two types single signal and composite signal now we have already showed you the compo composite and signal uh, single signal now composite signal then you have to do the amplification in a different way. Now, how this loss can be measured? Now, we calculate the loss in the unit of dB that is decimal. Now, this is what 
तो फॉर एग्जांपल हियर द एट टाइम t1 दिस सिग्नल इज एक्चुअली कैलकुलेटेड एज द पावर ऑफ द सिग्नल इज p1 एंड पावर ऑफ द सिग्नल p2 इफ यू कैलकुलेट द dv dv लॉस ऑफ कैलकुलेट द dv dv इज कैलकुलेटेड एज 10 log 10 बेस p2 by p1 now if we calculate this p equal to twice into volume so the same thing can be calculated as this, this will be power 2 so 2 will come here 2 into 10 20 log 10 by v2 by v1 so this is calculated okay now next is something called distor distortion distortion means the change or shape is basically changed now distorted signal is something like for example there is a composite signal now this is a distorted signal so there is a distortion in between the second is called distortion but the most okay common problem would be uh, there is something called uh, crosstalk also crosstalk is basically you know when those two signals overlap but in transmission impairment the most important thing is basically comes due to noise now for noise so for example this is original signal and this noise signal added with the original signal and produce the okay the signal which is noisy channel or noisy signal so basically the channel also has two things one is called noiseless channel and second one is called noisy channel when you talk about noisy channel we talk about something like so we will discuss about signal to noise ratio we will be discussing about the, how much noise is there in the channel uh, and we will calculate that how to and we will be doing some calculation with this noisy channel and noiseless channel so first the first formula is to calculate the signal to noise ratio we will call it as SNR SNR is nothing but signal to noise ratio so what is signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio is basically that the proportion of signal with the noise so if you calculate SNR this is nothing but average signal power divided by average noise power now this is the formula if I calculate SNR in as SNR dB this is 10 log 10 SNR this is the relation between SNR dB and SNR so if we calculate the average signal and if we divide the by average noise we can calculate this now in noiseless channel the signal rate the he is using the formula which is called Nyquist bit rate Nyquist bit rate is basically calculating the signal in different level now for so here in this case this is the number of levels required for calculation this is the bandwidth so Nyquist bit rate is basically calculating the data rate or bit rate for different noise less channel now let's take a problem in a noiseless telephony system in a noiseless telephony system the lower band is L1 is operating at 300 Hz and higher band H1 is operating at 3300 Hz so calculate bit rate so calculate the bit rate now how to calculate bit rate we will be using the formula 
First, we calculate the bandwidth. So we'll be using since we can write since this is noiseless channel. Since this is noiseless channel, we'll be using Nyquist theorem to calculate the weight rate. Now, if we are calculating Nyquist theorem, then weight rate is 2 into bandwidth into log 2 of 2 because it is using 2 channel that is L1 and L2 or L1 or H1 or L1 or L2 whatever it is. Now bandwidth is nothing but 3300 minus 300 is 3000 hertz. So weight rate is calculated 2 into 3000 into log 2 of 2 is 1 so 6000 hertz or 6 kilohertz so this is my uh, sorry 600 bps bits per second so 6 kbps so my bit rate will be 6 kbps in such case and next we will be taking the example of noisy channel now let's calculate what happens in case of noisy channel Noisy channel to calculate the capacity, we require the channel capacity to calculate the signal to noise ratio. Now, let's find out what happens in noisy channel. Now, in case of noisy channel, we use channel capacity. Capacity. Now, channel capacity is basically calculating how in noisy channel that bit rate is calculated. Now, this channel capacity C is calculated as B into log of 2 1 plus SNR. So, we require a signal to noise ratio which we have discussed earlier to calculate the capacity. Now, if SNR equal to 0, if signal to noise ratio, whatever noise is, signal is zero. That means the capacity will become zero. So if you calculate C into B into log 2 of 1 plus 0, then it will become B into log 2 of 1. This is nothing but B into 0 equal to 0. The capacity will become zero and signal to noise ratio becomes zero. Now, Let's calculate with an example. In a same telephony system, in the same telephony system, what we have, what we have that is lower band was 300 hertz, higher band was 3300 hertz. Okay, but we need to calculate the capacity when the signal to noise ratio given. So, if signal to noise ratio, for example, given as 3162, will be calculate the capacity as 3000 that is the difference bandwidth 3300 minus 300 is 3000 into log of 2 into 1 plus 3162 so this becomes 3000 into log of 2 3163 if we calculate the value this becomes 3000 into this is 11.62 and if we calculate this becomes 34000 860 bits per second. Now this comes at the 34 point 3 point sorry 34.86 kbps or this is exactly equal to 34.86 kbps. Now this is my signal to noise ratio. Now if signal to noise ratio given in dB, how to calculate the same? So, similarly, we can calculate signal to noise ratio when signal to noise ratio is given in dB. Now, for example, SNR dB is given, SNR dB is given as 36. Now, we know from the formula SNR dB is 10 log 10 of SNR. Now, in that case, we can calculate SNR from SNR dB as 10 to the power SNR dB, this is SNR dB divided by 
10. Now SNR DV is given 36. So signal to noise ratio will be calculated as 10 to the power 36 by 10 is nothing but 10 to the power 3.6. This is coming under. It is coming 3981. If you calculate. Now let's calculate C. C will be calculated as bandwidth. Now, for example, bandwidth is given as 2 megahertz. So if 2 megahertz is given, this will be 2 to the power 2 into 10 to the power 6 hertz. So C is now calculated. Now we get the value. C equal to calculated as bandwidth into log of 2 plus 1 plus SNR. Now let's get B is 2 into 10 to the power 6 and SNR is here in this case 3981. So 2 into 10 to the power 7, 2 into 10 to the power 6 into log 2 of 3982. If you calculate, this comes under 24 Mbps. So we can also calculate directly from the capacity from SNR DV. This is another formula to calculate. For example, C will be C equal to bandwidth into SNR DV, the value which is given divided by 3. So bandwidth here in this case is 2 megahertz into SNR DV is given as 36 by 3, so 12. This, is, so this will be coming directly 24 Mbps. So the calculation is same. So this calculates the center channel capacity. So we will discuss line coding techniques later. Thank you. Complete, sir. Huh.